Welcome everybody virtually. Um, my name is Reverend Ray. I am the Executive Director for People Acting in Community Together, also known as PAC, better known as PAC. I would like to welcome all of you as we celebrate 35 years, our 35th anniversary, and as we honor several extraordinary individuals who have made it their life work to get back and be true community builders. So we are here for a day of celebration. They are true community builders here in Silicon Valley. PAC, People Acting in Community Together, is a multi-faith grassroots organization composed of over 25 member congregations who care deeply about our community. They care about justice for all. For over 35 years, PAC has been providing leadership training and experience to community members of many different ethnic, religious, and social economic backgrounds. And through PAC, people work together to solve the most pervasive social problems of our day in our community here in Silicon Valley. This includes affordable housing and protecting renters rights. It includes reimagining public safety and promoting measures like Measure G, which promotes the expansion of the indep independent police audit. Uh, it includes immigration rights to keep our families safe and free from separation. It also includes education in both charter schools and public schools in efforts to provide equality education for all of our children and address things such as the digital divide. Organizing is so important and it has had historical implications. Back in 1963, faith leaders organized as they marched on Washington for jobs and freedom as a part of the civil rights movement. People like Ella Baker, who organized for African-Americans and human rights. People like Cesar Chavez, our very own here in San Jose, who organized and used nonviolent tactics to force farm owners to grant and meet workers' demands. People like Martin Luther King Jr., who dedicated his life and gave his life to organizing so that we have life, that we all have liberty and justice and equality for all. See, organizing demands that every human being lives out this truth because it is every human being's birthright, not just for the privilege and or as a privilege. So we must remember, we must never stop organizing. PACT is proud to be in solidarity with many other community-based organizations. We are proud to have relationships with PAC clergy and other clergy, and we are proud to make sure that we are always closest to the pain. Because the PICO principle says, those who are closest to the pain are closest to the solution. So we welcome you. Although we are virtual, we want you to put your seatbelts on for one hour of celebration. We encourage you to use the chat, amen. If you guys are familiar with Zoom and you know how to chat and um, chat it up in the, uh, the chat box, we encourage you to use chat and message your friends and participate in the PAC trivia. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have trivia today and we want you to get involved. So you are a part of the program. We may be virtual, but this is a live event. Speaking of live, we welcome those with us on Zoom and those joining us on Facebook Live. If you want to have a watch party, we invite you to get in the groove and let the good times roll. We're gonna stay here for an hour until it soothes our soul because it won't take all night long. We're just gonna be here for an hour. So one last thing before we kick off this celebration, before we lift up and celebrate some amazing community builders and leaders, we got four last days until we vote. All of our votes count. So we wanna make sure that you go to the polls, but listen, you can be like me and you can go to the Santa Clara County Register's office. It was easy, it was quick, and it was hassle free. Too late to put it in the mailbox. Don't trust the UPS. Go straight to the polls or go to the Register's office. So I celebrate my friend Evelyn uh, Mendez, who was on with me uh, this week with the, uh, at the Justice Project as, as we talked about some of the issues that we're facing, but how Santa Clara County and the Registrar's Office of Voters have made this very easy. So enough of me blabbering, let's get to our bro program. I want to introduce to you, uh, soon to be retired, a longtime clergy leader with Pat, Rabbi Melanie Aaron. So everybody, put your virtual hands together as we welcome Rabbi Melanie Aaron. Thank you so much and thank you for this warmth. You know, religions tend to take a long-term view, not where are we today or this week or this quarter, 
but where are we in this season or year or even millennia? And in difficult times like our own, that long-term view can help. As a rabbi, I am a representative of a very old people. We have seen hard times before. We have seen tyrants rise up, Nebuchadnezzar, Titus, and Hadrian, and more recent 20th century dictators who were the enemies not only of my people, but of all humanity. We have endured epidemics, lost wars, and economic collapse, and experienced the hatred and scapegoating that often follows. But there have also been rays of light, brave individuals willing to stand up using the knowledge that was available to them. I've been thinking a lot recently of the 19th century Orthodox rabbi, Israel Salanter, who stood up to criticism during a cholera epidemic. He insisted that to preserve their health, members of his congregation eat on Yom Kippur, even though it was the most holy fast day. We know through our own experience that if we don't stand up for others, there is no one to stand up for us. We understand that there is a lot in this world that we do not control, but we don't shirk our responsibility to act nonetheless. I first joined PAC during Matt Hammer's leadership, and I understood that he continued a family tradition, both from his mother, Mayor Susan Hammer of blessed memory, and his father, Phil Hammer, of service to our community. Irby Smith has been a teacher and model to so many in the nonprofit world, and we are grateful for the example she has provided. And so at this anxious time, we pray. Oh God, humanity approaches you in a myriad of ways, seeking strength and guidance. We pray at this time for true wisdom. We know the dangers of just being smart. We pray that we may truly understand that any hole in the boat will sink us all. Those who have contribute to our community here at PACT so as to allow us to grow and flourish as an organization. In Jewish tradition, 30 is for strength and 40 is for wisdom. We are thankful of PACT's increasing strength that allows us to play an important role in our greater community. Oh God, guide us that we may use that strength always for the good and grow towards the wisdom that you inspire. And let us say, Amen. Ashe, thank you so much, Rabbi Melanie Aaron. And before I continue, I just want to again thank you for your, your years of dedication and your service uh, to not just PAC uh, and not just uh, to your faith community, but to all of Silicon Valley as your leadership has been a model of how we seek to engage one another and overcome all challenges and obstacles. So thank you, Rabbi Aaron, for that wonderful reflection. And as I mentioned, Rabbi Aaron will be retiring at the end of this year. And she has honored us with one final reflection and we are grateful. So now let's get on with recognizing our elected and appointed officials who have joined us today. Now, we hope that uh, we were able to capture all of your names. And before I go down the list, if you have joined us late and we don't mention your name, go ahead and feel free to put it in the chat box. Because listen, hey, I don't want any issues. All right. <laughs> Did you like that camera? <laughs> All right. So I want to start off. We want to recognize Pam Foley. Pam Foley is a San Jose City Council member. So thank you, Councilwoman Foley, for joining us today. Kansen Chu, he's the, the assembly member here in our area. We want to welcome Dave Cortese, Santa Clara County Supervisor. We also welcome Jeff Rosen. He's our Santa Clara County District Attorney, we also welcome our Santa Clara County Public Defender, Molly O'Neill. We also represent the one who loves being booed throughout all of the county more than anyone I've ever known, our county accessor, Larry Stone. Can I get a virtual boo for Larry right in the middle of this? Everybody, boo him real good. He will not feel welcome unless you are virtually booing him. Ooh. All right, Larry, I hope you felt that at home, okay? I hope you first felt the reverberation of all of our boos, but we welcome you, Larry. Next on our docket, we invite Deputy County, County Assessor David 
uh, Ginsburg. So David, thank you, welcome. And we are excited to welcome the director of San Jose's Office of Racial Equity. All of three weeks, we welcome and we celebrate Suma Maciel for her newly appointed position. We are excited for you. We are here for you. We're gonna build some bridges and make some things happen. Now, one of my favorite positions in all of San Jose is the San Jose Independent Police Office. Office. They are guided by Siobhan Nure. Nure, Siobhan, we are happy to have you with us. We're going to pass Measure G, and we're going to make sure that we can continue to increase the expansion of your role when it comes to police accountability. We thank you so much. And last but not least, we welcome Joe Samidian, uh, Samidian our Santa Clara County Supervisor. So we want to thank all of you and your public service for your public service and your servants for leading and who have joined us today as we celebrate our honorees and as we celebrate Pat. So just in case we miss someone, I want you to put your name in the chat, just in case you registered late and we didn't mention you, uh, we wanna do that. So again, a welcome to all of our uh, electeds and community uh, servants. We are glad that you have joined with us today. And now, one of the best parts for me, uh, and Tamara can attest to that because as we had a run through yesterday, we had some good, Laughter. Uh, you don't know laughter until you come in and sit with these amazing Friends of PAC. So now uh, for the Friends of PAC Advisory Board, Friends of PAC is a committee whose role is fundraising for PAC by organizing PAC's annual luncheon. Every year they do this annual luncheon, but more than that, um, and I'll explain a little later, but I want to recognize them and call them by name. You see their beautiful faces on the screen. I want to thank and recognize Barbara Hansen. Let's give her a hand clap. I want to thank and recognize Vandana Kumar. Let's give Vandana a hand clap as well. And Marie Young. Marie has been around and is a, she makes sure that I stay honest in all of our uh, Friends of PAC halls. And last but not least, we want to recognize Cindy Ruby for supporting PAC by organizing this wonderful event every year. So let's give Barbara and Vandana and Marie and Cindy a virtual hand of applause for all of the work that they do for us on a regular basis. Their work is year round to make sure that PAC has enough resources. Now, if you don't know what resources means, that that's money. Uh, they work year round uh, to make sure that PAC has the resources it needs to sustain our growth and work in organizing. So now my appeal, if any of you in this audience, anyone of you who, who's listening to the sound of my voice is interested in volunteering and becoming a Friends of PAC, uh, PAC, uh, their friends, uh, Barbara and Vandana and Marie and Cindy, they're looking to make new friends. So if you're interested in joining, put your name in the chat or send me an email or put your name in the Facebook thread that's live uh, and we will contact you and you can be a part of this wonderful crew. Now, uh, now that I'm done babbling, I want to invite the people that are more important that you really want to listen to. I want to invite our Friends of PAC co-chairs to join us in recognizing our sponsors. So I want to invite to this virtual stage, Cindy Ruby and Vandana Kumar as they present those who have joined us in supporting our mission and organizing at PAC. I want to check that uh, Cindy's mic, is it on? Oh, yes, it is. is mine on? Yeah. yeah. Hello, everyone. I am Cindy Ruby, and I'm proud to serve as co-chair of the Friends of PACT. Through this work, I am helping PACT create a legacy of leadership in Silicon Valley to create a better future for all members of our community. And I'm Vandana Kumar, and I serve on the Friends of PACT to support PAC's efforts in building a just community for all. Since the leadership luncheon's inception, we have raised over $5 million for PAC and counting. Donors like you make the work of PAC possible and contribute to leadership development and unity in our community, regardless of our faith or the color of our skin. Thank you for your generosity and please know how important you are. 
And you know, we really could not do this without all the sponsors that help make the work of PACT happen. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our honorary sponsors, Applied Material Foundation, Heising Simons Foundation, San Francisco Foundation, Silicon Valley Community Foundation. Thank you to our titanium sponsors, the Lucille and David Packard Foundation, Susan Packard Orr and Lynn Orr, the Warmanhoven Foundation. And thank you to our gold sponsors, Cindy and Alan Ruby, Google, Wells Fargo Foundation, and our silver sponsors, Marie and Carrie Young, First Five of Santa Clara County, Heritage Bank of Commerce, McManus Faulkner, Cindy and uh, Randy Pond, Santa Clara Family Health Plan, Stanford Healthcare, Stevenson Brashear. And thank you to our supporters, CS and Jin Park, Congregation Shir Hadash, Daphne Ross, The Health Trust, First Unitarian Church of San Jose, Marcelo Brisson, Pamela Bond, St. John Vianney Church, Vandana Kumar, and Valley Water. Thank you all for your contributions. And now I would like to introduce the Master of Ceremonies for today's event, Tamara Mazawani Alvarado. Tamara is a longtime downtown San Jose resident, along with her children and her husband, Pedro. She has most recently accepted a position at the David and Lucille Packard Foundation as program officer in their local grant making program. She will be guiding investments that advance creative, environmental, and civic organizations that connect people with art, nature, and communities, creating a sense of place for all. Tamara is also a member of Calpuli Tonaleke Aztec Dance and the chair of the Western State Arts Federation. She's still very humbled to have received the 2019 PACT Community Builder Award. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tamara Mozawani Alvarado. That's all you cheering. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is your friend Tamara Mosawani Alvarado and I'm super happy to be here with you all. Thank you everyone um, and thank you PAC. I of course have to pull this out and show this off. Here it is from last year. Um, though those of you who know me really, really well know that even though I love the mic and I am truly a ham at heart, um, I was truly humbled and somewhat embarrassed at all the, the hype that went on last year. But in retrospect, I think about it and I think about the honorees for this year and all the other years and how important it is um, to recognize hard work. And so I just wanna say, thank you again. It is really important. And my kids actually were like, oh, mom, you do things. Anyways, okay, so I know we only have so much uh, time and energy and attention for, for the Zooms. Um, I want to also recognize Assemblymember Ash Kalra and San Jose Vice Mayor Chappie Jones. I saw that they were in the chat, so I just want to say, hey, what's up, um, and acknowledge you on behalf of PACT and this um, and in our, our Zoom state here. So, okay, so one, I want to say again that I'm, I'm honored. I'm so thankful to be here. I'm coming at you live and direct from my kitchen. As you can see, there may be some, you know, children running about doing the thing nothing new here in the Zoom world. I wanted to share just briefly that I'm such a fan of PACT and it's because PACT for me takes care of us. It speaks up for us. It is us and PACT makes room for people like me and others, maybe people who normally would never meet, to meet and to work together. And I know that there are many, many examples over the decades of how PACT has taken care of us in community, but I also know that during this time of the pandemic, that PACT has also taken care of us. And I was so happy to read about the phone calls, literally that were made to community to check in and say, are you good? Are you good? So there'll be a lot about uh, PACT 
but I wanted to share just a little bit from my personal perspective. And as you know, PAC continues to create large scale systemic change through the leadership of people who are directly affected by issues. Um, now there's a couple things here I also want to want to share. I know that there's going to be a, a, a slide that's maybe potentially going to pop up here in my live and transparent um, emceeing of this. I'm actually hoping that that um, the picture there will move along of me. Uh, but we know that these positive changes have resulted in sustained strategic work of PAC's grassroots leaders, leaders that are trained by PAC too conduct intentional listening with community members to learn about community concerns, research potential solutions, meet with public officials to engage their leadership. That's my favorite. I love meeting with you elected public officials uh, and host large community action meetings with public officials, community members and news media. PAC leaders also participate actively at city council and school board meetings with the county board and at the state capitol. PAC trains everyday people from diverse backgrounds, often people who have felt helpless, even hopeless, about the problems impacting our families and neighborhoods. These people become leaders in creating solutions. PAC staff and leaders made over 1,500 phone calls as the shelter in place orders came into effect for Santa Clara County, like I mentioned earlier, checking in with fellow leaders and their neighbors to understand their concerns and needs. PAC faith leaders created the moral response to COVID-19 in order to hold stakeholders accountable for the marginalized communities within Santa Clara County. Over 100 faith leaders and allies signed in solidarity and unified to protect those who were most at risk for losing their homes, at risk for contracting the virus due to limited or no PPE, and facing hate crimes due to xenophobia. PACT also created a Facebook Live event, the Justice Project, focusing on six major topics within the moral response. It has evolved to touch on current events affecting leaders and community. PACT helped to mobilize tenants and leaders to support the creation of an eviction moratorium in San Jose and Santa Clara County, also organized tenants coalition of existing affordable housing in Mountain View. PACT is also involved in an important voter engagement work and has focused on informing and engaging people who are often overlooked and encouraging them to exercise the power of their votes. That's amazing work and we'll hear more from our leaders in just a short time, in a short while. But before we do, we're going to start a little round of the PACT trivia. It's going to be multiple choice. It's not going to be too hard. And as soon as you choose your answer, you get to type the letter in the chat. And there, I know this sounds like crazy, right? Like we're gonna figure this out on chat, but let me tell you, PAC team, they've got it together. We're gonna to be giving out some prizes to the first person with the right answer for each trivia question. Okay, so is everyone ready? I don't get to hear you. So I'm gonna just hear like, ah, we're ready, ah, we're ready. Okay, so this is fill in the blank, all right? Okay, okay, so it's gonna be letters. All right, this is super fun, okay? All right, PAC's mission is to empower, are you all picking letters already? <laughs> I see you, Khan. Right, it's A, B, or C, okay? PAC's mission is to empower blank people to create a more healthy and just society by winning extraordinary victories for the community. Not by speaking for them, but by teaching people how to speak up and take action in the public arena through grassroots organizing, okay? Letter A choice is multi-faith. Letter B choice is every day. Letter C choice is multicultural. Are you already picking letters? Oh my gosh. Okay, well, it's not my job to pick the winner. So I'm gonna wait for my, for my um, I'm gonna get a text with the, with the choice. <laughs> this is hysterical, yo. Okay. All right, so I'm waiting on, I know you all are super excited. We are, somebody's gonna tell me, I don't know, this is crazy. Pack, you might have to buy some more of these uh, gift cards. Okay, should I just tell you what the gift card price is? It's a $25 Cold Stone gift card. All right, Cold Stone gift card, because yo, we haven't put on enough pandemic pounds here. All right. So I don't know who won that, but somebody's going to tell me. 
Uh huh. It's the answer is B. Everyday people. And we will find out at some point. There's a winner. I don't know who the winner is unless it was put into the chat. It's all right. Okay. So anyway, that's right. No, Pete from City Year. That's right. There are no calories in the pandemic. So actually. The ice cream situation is good for all. It's a community win. That's right, Mauricio. All right, so let's go to the, now we're gonna go to a video. So take it away. This video is gonna be very inspiring. I chose to get involved in PACT because I like what they do. I like that they tried to make a change in this country. I worked first with another leader and we created a group called Dreamers in Acción. And we've been answering people questions about that guy, like the status. That's been doing really great too, because I like informing people about the different things that are out there, like go out and vote. It's important, your vote is important. I believe that PACT has woken that leadership that I have that I didn't know I had. It has definitely changed the way that I felt before because my self-esteem has gone up. I don't feel just like one less person. I feel like I can do more. I chose to be a leader in PACT because I want to be an example for my daughters so they could have a better life and a better future. And it's also for the generations coming after them. In the next 35 years, I would like the community to feel and look more equal. I would like the community to see DACA students or DACA people can and have a future in this country. I feel like everybody can make a change. And if everybody will kind of put their time into it, to like make an impact in the community, I believe that everybody can make a change. All right. Okay, it beat me to the punch, but let me say this. That was an amazing video of Lisandra. Um, thank you so much. She wants a better place for her children and everyone to be equal over the next 35 years. I know we all want this. So we are going to, um, that was a little quick segue here because this slide came up. And so now I'm gonna invite you to pick up your cell phone because you know a good 80% of you already have it in your hand, right? Maybe you're tweeting, maybe you're on Facebook, but you get to text PACT in capital letters without the quote marks, and then also put 243725, easy peasy. I might even have to ask my daughter Mili to do this for me while I'm emceeing. Is that all right, mama? Yeah. Okay, she said, yeah. So we're gonna do that on behalf of our family. We'll make a donation right now. And once you text packed, by the way, that's my cat howling in the back in the background. It's just a party over here. Once you text PAC to the number, you'll see a link appear and you can click to start the donation process. So the best part of this text to give technology is that you can donate any amount and you can choose to even donate every month. So this year, because the because PACT has gone virtual and this is now a DIY luncheon, there's no ticket fee unless you choose chose to give as you registered. Uh, so if all of us donated the cost of last year's ticket, the entirety of your donation goes towards the work of PACT. So it's not going to food, it's not going to AV. So if you're able, please consider donating the past ticket price of $100. Um, I appreciate that. I'll be making a contribution of $250 and my daughter Mili will help me with that. Because, you know, I can only do a couple things at once. So thank you for that. Thank you for your support. Now, while you're on your phones, we're going to have another testimony for you to enjoy. So you, so you get the situation here, right? We're gonna play a video. And in the meantime, we're gonna be all doing this. You got that? Like, you know, press the buttons. See, even my cat said, press the button in cat speak. All right, I'm gonna mute myself. Let's do the next video. I moved specifically to San Jose to get involved with justice work in this community and learn from leaders here. My very first intersection with PACT was a dialogue. It was after the killing of Mike Brown. And I was pretty impressed because it brought together police and community members. And throughout it, I saw that 
quality of work and actions that they did in the city. That really compelled me to, I guess, bring my own activism to the next level and join in in what they were doing. PACT has been such an influential part. What I most benefit from is the structure that it provides in terms of how to really effectively organize people, understanding where your power or your base really comes into play in that. Often I would do personally mediated themes, so really targeting communities, addressing individuals, but more of that systemic picture. PACT has supported in connecting those personal relationships that I and my community have with those in power, really being able to bring about legislation and advocate for that legislation to be passed in a holistic way. PACT has really broadened and provided opportunity to be cross-cultural, interfaith, and really advocate for change because we all have a value for justice. Our faith calls us to action. And it's been a pleasure to organize protests, organize actions with brothers and sisters of various faith communities. I would love to see in 35 years, people even younger than myself leading the charge, really activating and empowering those who are younger to shape the future that they will live in. A more just world, a more sustainable world, a more equitable world, a world where each person, regardless of ethnicity, faith, and creed, can be proud to be a member of our community. That's the 35 year vision for me. Okay, great. That's such a great video of Ioma. I don't think I could explain what PAC does better than her. And what both of these testimonies have in common is that they both know that the work that PAC does will lead to a better future. It takes organizing, especially through tough times like this. Um, man, I know, right? It's a lot. There's a lot on our minds right now and what we've experienced in this year to get us where we want to be. So thank you, Lisandra and Ioma. I really appreciate your testimonies and the time that it takes to do that. I know there's been some chatter in there about like, what's the, if we can keep repeating the texting PACT, P-A-C-T uh, to 243725. And I think, um, I know Danny's on it. He's putting that in. There's some issues there on connecting, the connection freezes. No worries, we will get to you. Maybe we can even like pack and cop or not copy, but save the chat to go back and help people later. I hear that's a thing that you can do that. Uh, oh, Lisandra's here. Hey, I see you in the chat. Okay, all right. Um, I believe that we can do our next, hold on, hold on. Where am I, where am I? I'm working two screens here, okay? I'm all fancy, I'm fancy this year. So our next piece up is our next trivia question. Rev Ray, woo woo is my word for today. <laughs> All right, so our next trivia question, and I'm just gonna put this out there because we're doing transparent facilitation, transparent emceeing that Jen on the team for PAC, um, I saw a little note in my, in my script there, uh, something about a video from my friend, Chris, so private message me what you specifically want me to do there. Okay, all right. So we're gonna to move to our next trivia question. This one's gonna be a little tougher. All right, this is gonna be a little tougher. Leaders from PAX housing team played a critical role in passing what assembly bill to protect tenants across the state from unjust evictions, oh, thanks, and rent gouging. You have, there we go. Oh. It's going bonkers. <laughs> and all right, I know we have a lot of answers already. So we're gonna say that um, the correct answer is A, AB 1482. And congratulations. Um, <laughs> Ash, you can't chime in because you're a co-author. So there you go. Uh, this winner, which I still don't know who the winner was from the first one, there's, this is like all controversy, right? Winner of this, um, this round will be, a t this will be a $25 gift card to Pete's Coffee. So that's pretty exciting. I know for us, like, you know, if you get to be like a coffee connoisseur, you get all like mm, Starbucks, you like kind of look down on it, but you secretly still go there. And then Pete's is like, you know, want to be all fancy pants and highfalutin. But anyways, whatever. I like Pete's, I like Starbucks, I like coffee. So thank you, Pac. 
Oh, look at we're having trades. Trades are occurring. If somebody wants to trade the cold stone for the coffee, there you go. Y'all making deals. Willin and Dylan. All right. So as we prepare, um, as we prepare to present the 2020 Pact honorees, I would first like to recognize past Pact honorees uh, with us today. So we have, oh, I can just read it off my big screen here. Dolores Alvarado, my tocaya of the last name. Bob Brownstein, and, and you all can do like this. Bob Brownstein, whom I love and adore. Caritha and Ken Coleman, Caritha for president after that speech of theirs last year. Raimundo Espinosa, Karen and Ronnie Lott, and then some lady, uh, Tamara Mosawadi Alvarado, hello, and Harry Saul, and Charmaine and Dan Wormenhoven. So, applausos, applausos. I know I don't even have to translate that here because we're in San Jose and everybody speaks Spanish. Yay! The full list of the honorees is in this year's digital program. And in case you missed the link, we're gonna add it in the chat right now. This year's honorees, Irby Smith and the Hammer family are joining a very impressive group of community building leaders. Well, and we're super impressed by that too. Today we'll be presenting two awards. Um, there is the Hackworth Leadership Award is named for PAC's 1999 honoree, Mike Hackworth, who passed away in 2012. This is a special tribute to Mike's extraordinary contributions to our Valley and his longtime support for PACT. The Hackworth Leadership Award is usually given to a corporate leader who's also a leader for the community through philanthropy. And the second is PACT's Community Builder Award honors people who are champions in creating a more just and empowered community addressing economic and racial inequality like PACT. Introducing this year's Hackworth Award winner is Chris Wilder and there he is. That's my friend. So I'm gonna say a few words about this dude. Chris Wilder is a, PACT, uh, is a past PACT honoree, a past friend of PACT advisory board committee member and the executive director of the Valley Med Center, VMC Foundation, and also a past honoree of PACT's leadership luncheon. He has led the efforts to raise funds for and awareness of Silicon Valley's largest and only public medical center since 2003. During that time, the VMC Foundation has raised more than $90 million for the only hospital in Silicon Valley that serves anyone, regardless of ability to pay. He was named Outstanding Professional Fundraiser for 2008 by the Association of Fundraising Professionals. And might I add, because he is my friend, he is an amazing, he has a huge heart and he's a punk rocker and he's a totally good, good, good and totally cool man. And I, he has just come through for me in so many different ways. And so I so appreciate him. So we're gonna run the video of Chris. My name is Chris Wilder, and for the past 18 years, I've had the privilege of running the foundation at Valley Medical Center, our public hospital here in Silicon Valley. And for longer than that, I've also had the great pleasure of knowing our Hackworth Award winner, Irvy Smith. Now, Irvy and I, we have a lot in common. Uh, we both grew up in Texas and moved to Los Gatos when we were 10 years old. Uh, we both have generally voted Republican most of our adult lives, and we like to hone our shooting skills at the shooting range. Um, hmm. Come to think of it, Irvi and I don't have any of those things in common. So I wonder why it is that she wanted me to introduce her. Well, I hope it's because of this. Uh, Irvi and I both care deeply about this community and we both have a great love of philanthropy. Now for a quarter century, Irvi ran the Valley Foundation and she learned pretty much everything there is to know about how to invest money into the community and also how to run a good nonprofit, both from a programmatic standpoint and also, also an ethical standpoint, something that she's very, very passionate about. Um, Irvi is one of the kindest, most wonderful, generous people, both with her uh, uh, money and also her time. Uh, she's taught me so much over the years, more than I could ever remember. But some of the things she taught me are things like uh, no philanthropist ever gave away their last $500 and no organization owns a donor. So make sure you ask people because the number one reason why people don't give is that they're not asked. And the second reason is that they're not thanked. 
Irvi taught us that long ago, and I'll never forget it. She's taught us so much. She's done so many things. She's been uh, for decades on the board of the YMCA. Um, she's with Heritage Bank now, but she has her own consulting firm. Everything Irvi has done has been in the spirit of making this community a better place. And Irvi, I'm here to tell you, you have succeeded in that because uh, if one of the goals in life is to leave it better than you found it, Irvi has done that. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce this year's Hackward Award winner, Ms. Irvi Smith. Well, th thank you, Chris, for that very warm introduction. <clears throat> I'm sorry I had a little bit of a problem with my uh, unmuting myself. And thank PACT and the volunteers and staff, my family and friends, and all of you on this Zoom event today. Who would have thought a year ago that we, we would be having this virtual luncheon? We're living in some very crazy times, but I'm sure we will all get through them and come out much stronger. I am honored that PACT chose me for the 2020 Hackworth Award, Leadership Award, and really feel humble when I look back at the list of those people who have received it before me. When Cindy Ruby called to uh, make me aware of this, I was really surprised. As most of you know, I've been a consultant here in the Valley for over 40 years. And during that time, I had the privilege of working with hundreds of nonprofit organizations and foundations. I am very passionate about what I do and like to feel that I'm helping our great community become even greater for everyone. Nonprofits are really struggling these days more than ever before, which makes my job a little bit challenging, but at the same time, very rewarding. So many have adapted <clears throat> to these times and hopefully they will come through them intact. As Chris said, I'm currently with the Heritage Bank of Commerce, working in their, their nonprofit division, with working with clients on all aspects of governance and fundraising. I also assist in the distribution of the bank's corporate donations to worthy uh, uh, nonprofits in our community. And during my 24 years at the, as the executive director of the Valley Foundation, I had the privilege of assisting the board of directors in distributing and investing in uh, our nonprofit organizations for over 60, giving away over $60 million. I feel very blessed to have been able to, in my career, to not only be able to help organization raise funds, but to be able to give some money to them through my associations. Having spent all of most of my <clears throat> business career uh, here, uh, having spent half of my life in the business, I have always believed that one should give back to his or her community with their time, talent, and treasure. So I try to practice this, having served on boards, like Chris said, the Silicon Valley YMCA, <clears throat> the Rotary Club of San Jose, the Markle Center for Applied Ethics, the San Jose Chamber of Commerce, and the Association of Fundraising Professionals, all great organizations that do a lot for our community. I grew up in Los Gatos and I still live here, went to San Jose State, go Spartans, and established my business here in the Valley. Over the years, I have seen the Valley <coughs> change dramatically, both geographically and demographically. Where there was once a sea of orchards, there are now tall buildings. Where there was very little diversity in the valley's population, there is now a huge diversity. These changes are what makes our great community what we are today, and we all need to embrace it. The systemic changes necessary make PACT even more important than ever before. I was first introduced by, to PAC by Susan Hammer back in the mid 80s when she came to the Valley Foundation for funding to get PAC started. And I feel very honored and very special that I'm being honored on the same program as the Hammers today. 
Congratulations, Hammer family. Pat got the funding, of course, from that Susan requested. She then introduced me to Matt, its executive director, and I've been involved with Pat ever since, coming to the luncheons, helping him raise money, and through my association with Heritage Bank of Commerce, formerly with Focus Business Bank and the Valley Foundation, have been able to see that these organizations have invested in PAC as well. And again, I'm just very humbled to be able to be joining the list of uh, people that have really given to our community. It's been very exciting to see how this small grassroots org organization started and where it has come today. These times are vital, these are vital times and PAC is striving today to address even more issues with regard to social justice and now the coronavirus pandemic. This faith-based organization, like no other, can bring all sectors in the community together to solve the most pervasive problems of the day in a very peaceful manner. Reverend Ray Montgomery and his team of staff and volunteers are working long and hard with the faith community government foundations and other nonprofit organizations to bring everyone together in a united group to help solve these issues. Again, I attribute this to the fact that they are a multi-faith based organization and can work collaborative and work in a collaborative manner. I like to feel that I do somewhat of the same by teaching people to work together and make our communities become healthier, safer, and more thriving. In other words, like Pat, we teach them to fish, not give them a fish. I've spoken to many of the leaders, the empowered leaders in the communities, and they who have become leaders and are advocating for better schools, safer neighborhoods, and healthier lifestyles. They are very passionate people, dedicated and hardworking volunteers who do a very good job of engaging others to become active in their communities. I encourage all of you to support PAC, whether it is your first time or you're an ongoing contributor. Your dollars are needed today more than ever before. Like Tamara said, those funds need to be raised. So please, please contribute. Your time and talent matter also. So please consider how you can help in any way. I had a Zoom meeting the other day with Reverend Montgomery, and noticed that the t-shirt he was wearing was something that I strongly believe in. It said, love is the answer. We are commanded to love our neighbors as ourselves, no matter who they are or where they come from. Love is a very powerful thing, and when there, where there is love, there is hope. I have the faith that all of us, along with Pat, can provide that hope for the future. Once again, thank you all for being here and thank you so much for this prestigious award and congratulations again to the Hammer family. Sure, I hope you get a moment to take a look at the chat and see all the love that you are receiving, that you are getting sent. There's a lot of love for you, Irvi. And Irvi, I just want to say personally to you that I remember meeting you when I was executive director of MACLA downtown. Shout out to Eva Terrazas, because I know she's on the chat um, <laughs> or on the phone. And I remember meeting you, and you were so kind to me. And remember, I was in my very, very first executive director role, and I was very rough around the edges, still a little bit. But Irvi, I appreciate you so very much. You've always taken time to reach out to me and to be kind to me when I didn't know a dang thing. <laughs> and that's just how you are. You're kind and you're generous. And I so appreciate that. And you're right, love is the answer. Love, of our, love for our fellow man is what drives us and together we'll create a future where all can thrive. So you truly are an ally of PACT, thank you. So let's see here. Oh, the chat is just going all bonkers with so much love. This is the love chat. This is the love chat. Okay, so here's what's happening. I finally got it together and figured out who were the winners because I didn't know that my phone, I'm today years old to know that my phone has like a 
junk feature, and this is where the 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 winners of the trivia were going to be. So for the first one, it's it's Charlene, hey Charlene, and I'm Elephant, and then the next one is a Brian, uh, friend. So Danny, I'm going to ask you to maybe message them. Um, specifically, because I'm not sure I'm getting this pronunciation right. Okay, okay, okay. So let's do quick, quick another round of PAC trivia. What is PAC's focus area, areas? A, racial and economic justice. B, jail reform. C, affordable housing. D, all of the above. Oh, you guys, this is ridiculous. By the time I look at the chat, it's like going bananas, but that's not my job to choose the winner. <laughs> Okay, so the, the next, the winner of this um, trivia is a $50 Amazon gift card. Hey, so we'll figure that out. I'll get the, I'll, now that I figured out how to get these, <laughs> the winners, we'll find out. So we've got ice cream, we've got coffee, we've got Amazon gift cards, you're all covered. All right, so next up, we're gonna be introducing that who will be introducing this year's Community Builder Award winners is Michael Ray Matthews. And Michael Ray Matthews brings over 30 years of leadership experience as a senior pastor, grassroots leader, psalmist, and community organizer to his work as Deputy Director for Faith in Action, formerly Pico National Network, and has served on the PAC Board of Directors. He is the host of the Prophetic Resistance podcast where he engages multi-faith leaders in conversations about cultivating communities of belonging and sacred resistance to injustice. Reverend Matthews is president of the Alliance of Baptists, a progressive movement for justice and healing and co-editor of Trouble the Waters, a Christian resource for the work of racial justice. I tell the story of how I became an organizer. I often start by saying that I was ruined by it. I don't mean that faith organizing destroyed me, but it did ruin and reorganize my previous understanding of how to think about the role of faith and faith institutions and faith leaders in public life. It dismantled a rather domesticated way of thinking about my vocation as a pastor and the powerful life-changing work that could be accomplished by everyday people in the pews of houses of worship and in the streets of our communities. I discovered that organizing could help my church be a better church and help me become a better pastor. A key architect in this sacred and beautiful ruination is my dear colleague and brother, Matt Hammer. I first met Matt when I was an associate pastor and he was an organizer in Oakland. At the time, because his leaders kept calling him padre or father, I thought he was a Catholic priest. So a few years later, when I took a password in San Jose, Matt was the still new executive director of PAC. I greeted him and I said, you know I thought you were a priest. And then I told him, you don't have to explain organizing to me. I get it. I'm already ruined and I'm on board. Let's get busy changing the world. My relationship with Matt and my respect for his work only deepened in the years that I served as the PACT board's co-chair. And we became true family when Matt and Michelle invited me to officiate the name blessing for their children. It was on these occasions that I met the extended Hammer tribe and came to understand the deep generational source of Matt's commitment to the leadership of everyday people and the transformation of our communities. Susan and Phil Hammer embody the notion of compassionate community leader. Now I miss the years that Susan served as mayor of San Jose, but when I arrived in 2000, it was clear to me the level of respect and admiration she had garnered from the community over many years. It was clear to me that Susan and Phil led with moral courage, that they had created a network of family and friends who also sought to practice this moral courage and that they had committed their lives to the sacred work of ruining and dismantling any barriers to human flourishing and then architecting new pathways 
to beloved community. Congratulations, Susan, Phil, and Matt. May the memory and witness of Susan be a blessing for generations to come. And may the revolutionary love of the creator, both Phil, Matt, and the entire Hammer family as they continue to ruin our lives with revolutionary love. Thank you. Okay, just letting, letting the Zoom catch up. Thank you, Reverend Matthews, for that. And now, um, Senor Phil, because you know I can't just say Phil, because you know I'm Mexican and I was raised right, some home training. So, Senor Phil, por favor, adelante. You're on mute. I'm allowed to say that. Only you're allowed to say that. Maybe I have to also. There you, there you go. There you go. Yeah. We are unmuted. You know, I served on the board of Friends of Pact for about 20 years. Those who put together this luncheon are major fundraising event. For a dozen or so of those years, Susan's and my youngest child, Matt, was executive director. We worked with superstars like Cindy Ruby and Brenna Bolger and Akemi Flynn, who succeeded Matt as executive director. I pretty much warmed a chair but I brought enthusiasm for Pat's work that was unequaled. Like others, I came from a congregation, in my case, Temple Emmanuel, that believed in good works and found in Pat a way to walk the walk, to get stuff done, and sometimes in a very big way. Pat was a perfect fit for Susan in so many ways. She is smiling one of her biggest smiles at this moment. Thank you to the people who make this organization what it is, a gem for this gem of a city, San Jose, California. Thank you. Thank you, Phil, Senor Phil. Gracias por esas palabras. Thank you. And now I get to just quickly say hello, Matt. Hello. Thank you. Um, right. Um, so thank you so much uh, to my dear friend and colleague, Michael Ray, for that way, way too sweet introduction. Love you, brother. Um, and thanks also to my longtime buddy, Tamara, for all her Great, great work and leadership. We got to get you a late night talk show one of these days. Uh, and to Reverend Ray and Rabbi Aaron and Cindy and Vandana and Jen Bryant and to the whole Friends of PAC committee for this really, really kind honor. My family, we are all just very humbled, feeling undeserving and, and grateful for this. And a big hug and congratulations to the amazing Irvy Smith. This award is really a tribute to the extraordinary PAC congregations and leaders with whom we have all been blessed to work. This is together our honor, really our award. Sad that I can't be in the room with you all today to reconnect and can you even imagine it, share in lots of real life hugs and laughs. We will get there people. 2021 is gonna be the year of the hug, let's hope. So PACT grows out of the tradition of the great black civil rights leader, Ella Baker, who was the common thread, a critical behind the scenes leader during the 1940s, 50s and 60s and many of the important civil rights organizations that were driving our country to get real about real racial justice and freedom. Ms. Baker was, also, was always a critic of movements built around a few charismatic men. She said, strong people don't need strong leaders. Strong people don't need strong leaders. I think Ms. Baker would be proud of what the strong, good people of PACT have built over these 35 years, bringing people together and solving some of the toughest problems in our community. 
I was so blessed to be able to work for PAC for 12 incredible years, to be able to come home to San Jose after organizing in Mississippi and Oakland for many years. It was really a dream job. Seriously, what could be better than getting to spend my days with hundreds of the most extraordinary grassroots visionary volunteer leaders from all walks of life and faith traditions all across the city I thought I knew. Let me be clear, these are some not normal people, these PAC leaders. These are people who pour hours of their lives, month in, month out, year after year, to solving big community problems together as volunteers, holding government accountable to do better. So many meetings, so much work, so much discomfort and pressure and tough learning moments, but then also so many beautiful moments where people could see the long arc of history actually bending toward justice, as Dr. King said. So, you know, my mom really appreciated PACT and would have been so honored by this. She had a deep respect for the organization. When she was mayor, long before I was with the organization, PAC would do what it does, organize tons of people to apply pressure to move its political agenda rooted in the needs of the community. As mayor, she was the target of that pressure. It was always respectful, always within the bounds of civil discourse, but the strong, good people of PACT applied pressure. Hundreds and sometimes thousands of people pushing hard together to get her to commit city resources for neighborhood safety and after school programs and support for young people. She understood that PACT was doing its job, holding her accountable, and that pressure gave her the political cover to do the right thing, the righteous thing. She understood that democracy doesn't work if only the wealthy have political power. I have so many stories of what these strong, good people, these extraordinary leaders accomplished through PACT, fighting systemic racism in healthcare and education and so many other areas. I just have to brag on them a bit more with one story. I carry this around with me every day. It was, it was the year 2000 and our congregations were full of families with children who had no health insurance. So much needless suffering amid all this wealth. All this new funding was coming to the county through these big lawsuits settled against the tobacco companies. After much organizing and research, PAC leaders decided to organize for this money to go toward affordable health insurance for children. Then came this big action. Hundreds of us were packed into a hall at the Mexican Heritage Plaza on a Saturday morning with key public leaders who could make this happen with tons of local and national press because we were gonna be the first in the country to do this. And our beloved Father Matteo Schiti, in the last chapter of his life on earth after a long, difficult battle with cancer, hobbled up on stage in this packed room and gave the most chilling, moving prayer to open our event. Paul went silent as we waited for him to speak. As he gathered his strength, he opened with a question. It was really a demand. Quoting from scripture, he said, is there no balm in Gilead for the children? Is there no medicine in this rich valley for our children? And then his voice rose and he said, I'm sorry, but we just can't accept that. We can't accept that. Still gives me chills that moment because right then we knew we'd won. The people were gonna win. It was perfectly clear and no public official could deny this righteous demand of so many organized people. And our leaders did win an extraordinary victory, making our county the first in the country to provide health insurance to all low-income children, regardless of their immigration status. This set the stage for counties and states across the country to do the same, and for the Federal Children's Health Insurance Program to get created. More incredible wins, hundreds of moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas came together to deal with how bad the public schools were in East San Jose at the time for low-income children. Tiny numbers of children were getting a college degree. That ticket to opportunity denied them. Thank God for those packed parents. They held the public education system accountable and pushed hard for years and they won. They created some of the best new public schools in the whole Bay Area for low-income children, both new district schools and new public charter schools that have prepared so many students to get into college. 
and PACT's organizing continues for racial and economic justice. It's just amazing what PACT has accomplished in recent years, from the Rapid Response Network protecting families from deportation to Faith in Action's National Live Free campaign that organizes against the criminalization of people of color. So this is the good news of our country and our wonderful community here in the South Bay. There is certainly so much to be depressed about right now if you're looking to Washington DC for answers, but there's so much more to our story. We are a strong country and a strong community here filled with strong, good people who are working harder than ever through PACT and many other organizations to create the world we want. To create the world, as my brother Michael Ray says, that stands in prophetic resistance against the hate and division we hear in some corners of the public square. So thank God for PACT and its amazing leaders and congregations who are rooted in this irresistible vision, this vision of love, of relationship, of creating a community where all people can thrive. Give people light and they will find a way, Ella Baker said. Give people light and they will find a way. Thank you, Pac, for bringing light to so many of us. Our valley, our world in this moment have never needed you more. Thanks. Thank you, Matt. If we were all together, we would be having thunderous applause. Thank you, Matt, and thank you, Phil. And I, um, I just briefly will say that we also know that Susan invested a lot in the leadership of women and women of color. And I know that I had the, um, it was the blessing of working with Susan on the ACE charter school boards. And she taught me a lot, everything from taking care of us. She would bring cheese and crackers to every meeting and she would prepare it and she would set it out. She set that example of service, not only just through small actions, but large. And so I think her and her memory. And I thank you, Matt, and you, Senor Phil, for your work in this community. So we're nearing the close of our event. And before we sign off, I want to remind everyone that we'll have a drawing. There's a drawing. And apparently, you must be present to win, present in your home, present wherever you are. Um, and I want to express my deepest gratitude um, to the amazing people at PACT, the PACT Board of Directors, hundreds of grassroots and faith leaders, PACT's hardworking staff, Reverend Ray Montgomery, Mercy Martinez, Ruby Ramirez, Danny Don, Esme Virelas, and the newest member, Jennifer Bryant. Hi, Jen, who's been taking care of us. Chris Logan and Teresita Soto. And today, as we celebrate 35 years, I wanna take a moment to recognize two PAC leaders who have continued to organize since it was founded in 1985. So this is, um, I want to recognize Diana Wilkerson Graham. And there's a quote here to read. PACT has been part of my life since 1985, and it has been a privilege to be a part of a faith-based organization. It has helped me to grow personally and become active in the St. John Vianney Church community. I'm pleased to have worked on so many issues that have helped the people of our community and the city of San Jose. And I know I saw Darlene in there. She said she was a PACT baby, uh, Lily Tennis. I'm very proud to have been a co-founder of PACT. It has brought me much joy to be able to bring justice to the less fortunate in our community and to see the growth of individuals to become social justice leaders. That's amazing. How many nonprofits do we know that have supporters for more than 35 years? So thank you, Diana, and thank you, Lily. All right, and now we have, did, thank you, yes, yes, we did. Yes, there's a lot of chatter for them as well. Um, and now the moment we've all been waiting for the drawing, drawing for the $150 Visa gift card is, uh, let's see, hold on, I'm getting late breaking news here. In your script. <laughs> oh, you were texting me, Jen. Trans transparent. So this is what we're going to say. All right. She said it's in your script. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's Diana Wilkerson. <sighs> We're so happy for her, right? Even though we didn't win. <laughs> ah, I love it. Okay, okay, keep it. Um, all right, now here's another thing that I wanna make sure to let you all know, cause I'm really interested in this myself, is that I wanna mention that PACT, ALF, that's the American Leadership Forum, 
Uh, not the alien life form. Okay, I'm sorry. I've always wanted to use that joke. Thanks for letting me do that. So PACT, ALF, NAACP, and the City of San Jose, good job, City of San Jose, will be hosting Boston University professor Ibrahim X. Kindi, author of best-selling book, How to Be an Anti-Racist, and the founding director of the Boston University Center for Anti-Racist Research. So this event will clearly sell out. Please register right after the luncheon if you're interested in attending. And if you haven't read the book, go out and buy it. It's a must read. Tickets are free, just like this event. And there's going to be an option to donate when you register. OK, OK, OK. So then, oh, thanks, Danny. There's a, in the chat, there's a, a link. Link in the chat. Um, and now, final winner of the grand prize for today. It says tonight in my script, but clearly it's today. Is $250, and it goes to Clarine Merritt. Did I say that right? Clarine Merritt. We're so excited for her. Be excited and maybe she'll take you to lunch. Socially distance. Thank you. Congratulations, everyone. Congratulations, everyone. Matt, Senor Phil, Irvi, congratulations. We love you. We adore you. We have so much love for you in this community. And thank you everyone for joining us today we will be back in 2021. Don't forget to go out and vote. Take your vote. Take somebody to vote. So thank you. Todos gracias y que estén muy bien. May you all be well. Thank you. Goodbye.